These are the five biggest lessons that I've learned that have helped improve my productivity after studying self-development for the last decade. Actually, it's been like 14 years, but decade sounds better. One, being able to distinguish the difference between what is busy work and what is actually pushing the needle forward. Throughout the years of trying to be productive, I often find myself just doing activities, feeling like I'm actually doing something, but when I really think about it, it's not doing anything for me. This is really a big thing when you start getting involved in the self-development, self-improvement type books, because you may have a set goal in mind of where you wanna be in the future, and a lot of times when you study self-development, you end up finding yourself doing things like cold showers and meditations and making vision boards. And although all those things can improve your life in some way, you have to recognize that that is just busy work. It doesn't actually move you forward. If you're actually trying to lose weight or get more fit or make more money, like making a vision board, taking a cold shower, meditating every day, making your bed, none of those things actually contribute to you trying to achieve that goal. Just recognize what you're doing and make sure it's actually pushing you forward. Again, nothing against those things. You can do those things, but just know that they're not the work you need to do to achieve your goal. Number two, take 100% responsibility for your life. I actually learned this one about a decade ago in the book, The Secrets of a Millionaire Mind by T. Harv Eker. But I noticed throughout my life over and over again, it just keeps coming up and coming back to me. The thing is, even if something happens in your life that you have absolutely no control over, you can still always do something about it or at least change the way you feel about it or choose to ignore it. Because if you put your success or your happiness into the hands of something that you can't control, you're essentially giving the control of your life away to some other person or some other situation. You can always do something to improve your situation. Don't let outside entities control your life. Take control. The easiest way to do this is for us to consciously stop doing these three things. We all do these subconsciously, but the first one is blame. Often in the world today, we're guilty of blaming outside sources for our current situation, whether it's our jobs, our boss, uh, the government, the current president. These things may play a role in your life and may affect your life in some way, but you have so much more control of your life than any outside source. Everything you need to succeed is within you. Try to limit or stop completely yourself from blaming other people or outside situations. The second thing is complain. This one's a little obvious, but we all naturally just subconsciously do it. And that's why you kind of consciously have to stop this for yourself. Complaining about your situation, although maybe it's good to vent sometimes, you have to recognize that it doesn't benefit you or your life at all. And often it can make other people feel bad about themselves if you're complaining about a person or a thing. It's just, it's not a good habit to do. And although we do it pretty naturally, I, I would recommend consciously trying to stop complaining because there's always something you could do about it. Once again, take control of your own life. And third, this is the most important and the most deceiving one that people don't realize is a very destructive thing. And that's justification. If you're unhappy in your life with something, whether it's your current situation, your current relationship, your current health, your current uh, money, financial situation, situation, justifying the reason you're there or the reason you're that way doesn't help you. It hurts you. And you may have really good reasons for those things. You may not be able to argue with that justification, but just know that there have been people in the world that have achieved ultimate success that have gone through so much more hardship than you. And I don't know you, I don't know what you're going through, but I do know that there are lots of people that have it worse than you that in end up in a better situation. Number three, motivation is a result of taking action. This is one of the most mind blowing things I've heard actually recently. I heard it from the book Motivation Myth if you wanna check it out. Essentially, in order to get motivated, you have to first start doing the activity that you're trying to accomplish. You don't get motivated to do the activity. And surprisingly enough, this actually works. You have to understand that in our world and in the self-development community especially, a lot of people seem to think that the ultra high achievers just have more motivation than other people. It seems like a lot of these books just talk about find your why and find what drives you and make a vision board to motivate you to do this action. And it makes it sound like these people just have so much drive to get away from where they were or drive to go towards the thing that they want that they're just
just able to push through any obstacle to get there. And that is the biggest misconception amongst trying to be productive. That will ruin your productivity because motivation is so finite and it's so hard to get and you can't depend on it. You can't build habits on motivation because there are days that you're not gonna wanna do this thing, no matter what you try and do to get motivated. And you end up wasting the whole day trying to motivate yourself to take this action when all you needed to do was take the action and then you'll feel the motivation to continue working on it. It's a huge mindset shift. Now, that leads to how do you get started with taking this action if motivation is not the thing that gets you started? That leads me to number four. Use the five minute rule. Commit to doing a task for at least five minutes, then decide if you wanna continue. The key is to make the time of you working long enough so that you hit that motivation to continue going, but short enough to where it's not a massive obstacle for you to undertake and then ultimately it just discourages you from doing that activity. This is the example I like to give. If you're making your goal to go to the gym for an hour a day and work out and you find yourself never doing that, that's because the goal you set for yourself is too big. You need to first build the habit and the motivation of you going to the gym in the first place. Just make it something like work out for five minutes or do 10 push-ups a day or five push-ups a day or even just one push-up a day. Something so ridiculously easy that you just feel stupid for not doing it. Like I literally couldn't do one push-up a day. I'll just do it right now. And as soon as you start doing something like that, for me, it takes about two minutes, uh, but two minutes of doing a, an activity and you just feel motivated to continue going. So you don't use motivation to take action, take action and you'll feel motivated. And number five, <laughs> It's so cliche, but take action. <laughs> Commit to doing a task for at least five minutes, then decide if you wanna continue. This is the one thing that hinders it all. This is what happens to me. I notice that I get extremely anxious and I'm one of those people that don't really show their anxiety or anything. And actually a few years ago, I was so stressed and anxious that I actually, so I got up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom and I, just blacked out i passed out like i felt myself getting dizzy and then i just blacked out and i woke up and the the tv big giant big screen tv was knocked over and everyone was around me and i don't even know what happened and when i went to the hospital they basically said it's uh anxiety and stress and i never showed it i'm one of those people that never really show that i'm anxious and stressed i try and be you know confident and uh like i have my shit together all the time you know but that was kind of a wake up call for me. I, I also broke my clavicle when I fell, so that kind of sucked. The thing that I found to cure that for myself anyway, is that when I feel myself, you can kind of feel yourself getting anxious, you know? The one thing that cures that is just taking action. I'm saying take action because you won't move forward unless you do, which is the cliche thing. But I'm saying take action because it's the best thing you could do for your health and your mental anxiety. If you have anxiety or depression, taking action towards something you want is the biggest thing you could do. Tony Robbins always says progress equals happiness. And he is so right about that. If you feel like you're moving forward, if you feel like you're progressing on the goals you're trying to achieve, whether it's your health, and fitness goals, your financial monetary goals, your relationship goals, if you feel like you're moving forward on these things and you're actually taking legitimate actions towards fixing or improving these things, it helps you mentally, it helps you physically. It's not said to be specifically this, but one of the biggest causes of deaths in the United States is just depression and anxiety because that completely destroys your immune system, your body, how you're feeling for your own good and for your own health. And for the people around you, do it as well. The people that love you, take action. It's a game changer because even if it's not the right thing, if you just get started, you'll reach that point of motivation to continue going. It's amazing. Those are the five biggest lessons I've learned in the last decade or so of studying productivity and self-improvement. But if you really wanna change your life and actually apply these things, you need to build good habits. This video right up here will show you exactly how to build any good habit you want and take your life to the next level. So thank you so much guys for watching. See you in the next one.